Are you confident the boats will stop? Rishi Sunak seems supremely sure they will. Uh, it's certainly not in time for the election. There are all sorts of question marks about this bill. The first is simply, can it get through Parliament? The House of Lords is going to put up an awful lot of trouble. There's not left, there's not time enough left before a general election to use the Parliament Act to force it through. That's question one. Question two, it will then be subject to legal challenge in the courts. Now, the government does seem, on my reading, to have done a pretty rigorous job of shutting down the current ways in which people uh, use the court system to appeal against deportation. But of course, it's a bit like tax evasion. Every time you close a loophole, the accountants find a new one. Those lawyers who are defending these people will be, as we speak, working out new legal strategies. And we can't tell whether or not those will work. And of course, the policy will be essentially frozen uh, while it goes through the courts. So it might be that this is the bill which finally makes the Rwanda scheme operational in theory yeah. whether or not it's operational in practice we almost certainly won't find out for months and months if not a year or more yeah and, and which is another in, in another way of translating that we won't ever find out at all because by then the tories won't be there labor will and they'll doubtless scrap it or i mean there is a question mark there but even i, I guess henry i think everything you've said is is, is spot on um I, the, the problem with this, of course, is that even if notionally it, it works and a few planes take off, it, f from everything we know about how, how many people Rwanda is able to process, it doesn't look as if it's, it would manifest in any kind of meaningful way. You know, we will likely see hundreds rather than thousands of people being put onto planes and sent to Rwanda. So the current capacity for Rwanda is they have one purpose-built facility with 200 places, but the Rwandan government has stressed that there is capacity, uh, a potential capacity for thousands. And I think that the argument would be that if the Rwanda scheme finally managed to get operational and we started getting planes over there, then the, both governments could work on expanding capacity at the moment. Working on expanding Rwanda's capacity is a bit superfluous because we can't get anyone there at all and getting the scheme operational has consumed all of the government's attention. So it's not as if the hundreds figure is the maximum amount. But yes, I think in terms of the scale of the problem, mm. the number of asylum claims we get every year, the number of people crossing illegally, the Rwanda scheme on its own is never going to be a universal deterrent. I think that what it was is a sort of trial balloon. If the government can get offshore processing working in Rwanda, and that relationship proves to be profitable for Rwanda, then I think the thinking is that that there may be other countries that may be amenable to similar deals. Uh, of course, two people that don't necessarily agree with or, or, or have faith in the, uh, the, the effectiveness of Rwanda are the former Home Secretary, Suela Brabman, and the immigration, former Immigration Minister, uh, Robert Jenrick. One was fired a couple of weeks ago and the other legged it just last night. Yeah, I think the latter of those resignations is much more significant than the former for Rishi Sunak. So Ella Browderman was always known as somebody who wasn't on the same page as the Prime Minister on a huge number of issues. She was constantly making high-profile interventions which pushed the boundaries of ministerial accountability. And she's known to be angling for a Conservative leadership run after the next election. Robert Jenrick is quite different. He was a loyalist. He was put in by Rishi Sunak and it was widely perceived as a decision to put someone who's friendly with Downing Street to keep an eye on the Home Office, and he has a reputation for really trying to get to grips with difficult issues. When he was made Housing Secretary by Boris Johnson, he made a real go of trying to deliver planning reform. Of course, the reward for that was that he was sacked. So it's significant, I think, that someone like that has spent a year, just over a year, at the Home Office trying to get a grip on immigration and has ended up closer to Suella Braverman's position. I think in the medium term, that says something quite significant about the shape of policy debate inside the Conservative Party about immigration going forward. And where does this put, do you sense, Jenrick within the party? Does he now look like uh, a rising star? He's a hero, some would say, to some sections of the party. I mean, that's another issue about how splintered the, the Tories are right now. Where, where does he go from here? Um, well, obviously, for now, to the back benches. I don't imagine there will be a return to government after this before the election. And as you say, the Conservatives are currently sort of 20 points behind in the polls. So I don't imagine he'll return to government anytime soon. I think what's important is that when Suella Bravman or someone like Suella Bravman comes out and says that we need all kinds of really extreme, uh, not extreme, but sort of stringent measures on yeah. 
uh, tackling international law, that's kind of priced in by some people because that's the wing of the party she's from. If someone like Jenrick is saying the same thing, people in the party who might be tempted to dismiss Suella Braverman as kind of politics by punditry will sit up and take notice. I don't think Robert Jenrick is going for a leadership bid. I've not heard anything about it, but you never sure. know, maybe he will. But if not, he'll have a significant shape on the debate to come. Well, it, it kind of puts him in team Braverman, if nothing else, I guess. And in, in that respect, Henry, we are... I mean, the Tories love a scrap. Well, we know that much, and they, they like to have one in broad daylight if they can. And they're doing it again, um, tearing themselves apart, it seems. And there's lots of different groups. There's the New Conservatives, there's the other lot whose name escapes me now, and there's a couple of others if you look a little deeper. Um, so it's, it's almost more than one party. They can't quite decide what they want.